Hi everybody and welcome to tonight's video where we're just going to take a brief look at an introduction to logic notation. So whenever we're working with conjectures and using reasoning or logic like we discussed the other day in class, we want to make sure that we're very organized and ordered in our approach. So we're going to have some different symbols and vocabulary that we're going to use to help us organize our arguments. And we just want to make sure that we're always being consistent, uh, just like we have to always be consistent when we're using symbols to identify different geometric terms or items, like we went over with identifying lines and angles and naming different things. So the same thing when we're uh, going to form any arguments using logic. We'll make sure that we're using the right vocabulary and the right symbols. So anything that we declare is called a statement. And any statement can be either true or false, which is what's referred to as its truth value. And any statement can also be negated or written as what's called a negation. So if you're writing notes right now, you should make sure you're going to write everything that's on the screen and then make sure that you're underlining these key terms because those are things that we're going to refer to. And essentially these are the definitions of those terms. So you might have to pause this video a number of times because we're really not going to write out too many examples. It's really just going to be me talking through some of this. So make sure you can identify what a statement is. Think of what the truth value of every statement is and then also know what it means to write a statement as a negation. So here's an example. One statement that I can make is, I am a math teacher. The truth value of that statement is that it's true, I am a math teacher, and the negation of that statement is to write it negatively, so to say, I am not a math teacher. Okay, So those are examples of a statement, the truth value, and negation. Uh, so we have some symbols to write this out faster. I don't want to always write out the word statement, truth value of the statement, and negation of the statement, right? That's a lot of words to write out. So we're going to have some symbols. So to take exactly what I have written here and to write it out using our symbols for logic, uh, instead of saying statement, I'm going to use lowercase letters, usually P, Q, R, S, that sort of thing, depending on how many I'm using. Uh, and so P represents the statement, I am a math teacher. So then further on down, whenever I'm talking about this statement, I can just refer to it as the statement P. Then the truth value of the statement, so I've used the symbol P to represent the statement, I am a math teacher. So now I can just say P is true, instead of having to write out anything like the whole truth value of the statement it's true, I am a math teacher. I can just say P is true. And then I use this symbol to say the negation of the statement. So, so to say the negation of P, or another way to say that is not P, um, is to say I am not a math teacher, right? So uh, this little symbol, it's called a tilde. Um, so if I say not P, so if I see that little squiggly line, it looks like what goes over the equal sign in a congruence symbol. So to say uh, that, if I see that symbol in P, I'm going to think of that as not P, or the negation of P, whatever that statement is. Okay, So that is taking this example and translating it into symbols. So usually we're going to use a lowercase letter, identify the truth value, and then we'll see this little symbol here to identify the negation of a statement. Okay, so let's do some more examples and we'll do some uh, regular non-mathematical examples and then we'll work in some of our topics and definitions that we've already talked about. So P, statement P, Columbus is the capital of Ohio not P, or the negation of P, is that Columbus is not the capital of Ohio. So P is true, the negation of P is false. So any statement, even if it's the negation statement, can also have a truth value. So to say Columbus is not the capital of Ohio, that would be a false statement. Okay, so P is true, the negation of P is false. Uh, statement Q, a regular polygon has congruent sides. 
to write the negation of that, I would say a regular polygon does not have congruent sides. And again, Q is true, the negation of Q or not Q is false. And then a third example here to say R, statement R, a line has two endpoints. The negation of R would say a line does not have two endpoints. And in this case, remember, a line does not have two endpoints. A line is uh, a line segment would have two endpoints. So in this case, R is false, and the negation of R is true. So you'll see that usually, if Q is true, the negation of Q is false. Uh, if R is false, then the negation of Q of R is true. Okay, so here's a few examples for you to use. So write these down. Make sure you have P, Q, and R written down because in the next slide, I'm just going to refer to them using their symbols. Okay? So moving on. We have statements, and we can actually use separate statements to come up with what's called compound statements. So that's where we have two statements that are joined together. And the two words that we're going to use to join them together are the words and or the word or. Right? So and and or, those are my two words that I'm going to use to make my compound statements, just like if you make a compound sentence. So the symbols for them, and, uh, is just like a, a caret, or it looks like a capital A with the line in the middle missing is the way that you can always think of that. Uh, to represent and. And uh, and compounds, if I ever have a compound that has the word and linking the two statements, that's called a conjunction. And if I ever have an or statement, it looks like a capital V is going to be the symbol for or. An or compound is called a disjunction. So those are two terms to also be aware of. So here, if I have P and Q, statement P and Q, together. Columbus is the capital of Ohio, that was statement P, and a regular polygon has congruent sides, that was statement Q. And they're linked together with an and. So I see the and symbol there, I'm going to link these two together. Not Q or R. So that's the negation of Q or the statement R. So a regular polygon does not have congruent sides as the negation of Q. Then I have the word or. A line has two endpoints. So a regular polygon does not have congruent sides or a line has two endpoints. Uh, that would be this disjunction statement. Now, compound statements can also have truth values. So conjunctions are only true if both statements are true. That's because of that and that links them together. So to say and something, right, means that both those things have to be true. And conjunctions are false if either statement or both statements are false. So up here, when I look at this and statement, this conjunction, Columbus is the capital of Ohio and a regular polygon has congruent sides. The truth value of that is that this statement is true. And that's because P is true and Q is true. Down here, for the disjunction, disjunctions are true if either statement is true. So it's a one or the other sort of thing. So a regular polygon does not have congruent sides or a line has two endpoints. So disjunctions are true if either statement is true and false if both statements are false. In this case, not Q and R. Those are both false statements. So the truth value of the negation of Q or R is false, right? So as a disjunction, this statement is false. So um, on your own, why don't we do a few things? I want you to write out, write out the following compound statements and determine their truth values. So I'll use the symbols and then you'll write them out and bring this to class tomorrow and also determine the truth statements of each one of these that I'm going to write in symbols. So write out the following compound statements and determine 
fair truth values. Okay, so let's say we already did P and Q. Let's do P and R. We'll do not P or not R. Let's do Q and not R. And then we'll do Q and not P. Okay, so there's four statements here that I want you to try to write out. Write them as the compound statements. Make sure you're using either the and or the or. And then determine their truth values um, using this bit of information right here. Okay, so bring this to class tomorrow. We'll go over these answers to start. And I will see you then. Have a great night.